Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. I just got a brand new Field Company cast iron skillet. We're going to unbox this baby, take a quick look at it, and then we're going to compare it to some of our antique cast iron that we just got up in Tennessee. So y'all stay tuned. This bad boy out of the box here. See how it's packed. It's got Field Company logo tape on it. It's a pretty nice touch. I guess the folks over there at Field Company finally watched enough of my cast iron videos that they figured I should have one of these. So sent it on over here. We're also going to have a, an affiliate link, which I'm going to leave you right down in the description box. Uh, to where you can go and purchase the skillet. So I guess on the inside it's got another box and a card. Hey, it's addressed to me. We hope you're enjoying using this pan and look forward to seeing the videos you can create with it. Happy cooking the field company team. That's great. Great uh, card there. Man, look at that. That's smooth. All right. Here's the logo and obviously made in the USA. So it still has that, that rough uh, mold sand texture on the outside, but the inside, perfectly smooth. So let's uh, get this box out of the way and then we'll compare this to some of our old antique ones. Okay, brand new field company uh, rests right out of the box. Okay, closer look at it. Switch it around there. All right, and this is a number eight pan. So I pulled out a couple of other number eights that we have here that are that are uh, antique or very old. And starting with this one, and the reason I pulled this one out, I wanted to compare these uh, width of this walls here, very similar to the all of the other three. Okay. This one here, we just picked this one up in Tennessee. This is a wall pack. And it's also a number eight. And it's very similar in shape. It's almost identical height. Uh, it does have the pour spout. So this one, I it was restored when I got it. I've been trying to season it. I hadn't had a whole lot of luck building up anything on that yet. But we're working on it. All right. Next, going to the good old Wagner. All right. That's been a great skillet. The only problem with this one, if you use it inside, that bottom is warped like you're going to find with a lot of these old antique pans. You put that on your glass top or your induction top, and it spins around like just like that. Now, here's another we just picked up in Tennessee. This is a Griswold. This is a small box one, so uh, 1940s, 1950s. Uh, I haven't touched that since we've got it home here. This is exactly the way I bought it. So seasoning is probably, I would say, that's the original seasoning in it because there's still, you know, that line you get here. As, you know, if you cook something with uh, a lot of acid in it, it can eat back that seasoning. Um, so I would say that's that's as is uh, patina on that thing. Uh paid $54 for this one and I also paid $54 for the Wapak. The Wagner, uh, don't remember. Okay, update from Mrs. Backwood. She bought this one for $12 in a state sale. That was a good buy even, if, even though it's got a little warped bottom on it. That'll work fine on your propane, uh, your regular ring burners or like we use it here a lot on open fire just doesn't work that great on the glass top so that was the one reason I wanted to get this wall pack because it's got a perfectly flat bottom on it but back to the field company let's go ahead and uh, what we're gonna do next we're gonna wipe this thing with a little bit of oil I think I'm gonna use just a straight vegetable oil the first time um, but I'm gonna put it over on the burner and warm it up a little before we do that we got a lint free rag and we're actually gonna use some lard for this first seasoning and then we're going to cook some bacon with it. 
I just had a few minutes to warm up. Just gonna wipe just the inside surface on it for now. But after we're done cooking today, I'm gonna go ahead and season the uh, the entire pan. All right, guys. So what we did is just a quick little stove top seasoning on both pans, and now we're gonna make breakfast. We're gonna make the same dish in both pans. Kind of compare them. If you think any of these pans are going to be non-stick right out of the box, you are sadly mistaken. It takes time, but it's all part of the process. I just get the wooden spoon out of there, give it a little start up. Or sometimes I like to get out my metal tool. Hi guys, so we're here at the local Antiques Mall, and uh, if you follow us at all, you know what we're looking for. We're looking for antique cast iron and a good deal. So we just pulled up, we're just pulling out here, and so we're going to go search this little antique mall and see if there's anything that's a good deal and antique. There's Mrs. Bagwoods and Makita. <laughs> all right guys so i am so tempted with all everything is here i already have three on the counter up there two griswolds and a wagner that i'm gonna buy this one says oh it does say i can see griswold yep and it's gate marked okay it's, it's gate marked and it's 40 bucks let's see what the turn it over let's see the inside smooth uh, it's got some pretty big pits in it, but that's normal for these old, old ones. That's just casting imperfections. It's very smooth. Okay, put that one on the counter, too. Okay. Yeah, I don't have anything that old from Griswold. Um, there's some some old uh, big, big box Griswolds, like the one we have at home, but their price little too steep for me I actually have another one down here with the full smoke ring 150 bucks mm. yeah, yeah well love to have it but uh, not today alright so we decided on a Wapak don't have one uh, small box Griswold great shape too awesome shape and uh, an old gate mark Griswold that's where we're going to come out of here today with about 160 bucks but I think it's a good deal so y'all stick around and we'll cook something up on them Now it's time for some fried potatoes. Red potatoes with some onions. Let's put the same amount in each one. I like I got the fire a little higher on this one. Cut that down a little bit. I cut both these down to low. It's going to take some time to cook them potatoes. All 
I find the sooner you start stirring these a little bit, the less they're going to stick. And it's going to bring up that fawn from the bacon right off. That's going to give a great flavor to your potatoes. All right, one thing that really helps speed up the cooking of your potatoes and makes them more even is to put a lid on. Let's see how standard 10-inch lid fits on the field. It does fit down inside, not up on the rim, but it fits. Same exact scenario with the good old Wapak. Taters look done to me. Let's go ahead and what take I like them to off. Do is, I like to drain off my 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 uh, bacon grease. I'm gonna go inside and hit that with a little warm water and a brush, and then we'll put the bacon grease back in before we put in our eggs. All right, so we did that to the field company. I'll bring over the bacon grease just a little bit. Bring all of it over into this pan. Now we can go do the same thing to the old the old pan. Okay, brushed out. That one, so let's go in, divide that bacon grease up between the two. And I like to start my fires down pretty low for eggs. I uh, don't like that kind of scorched egg deal. But it's really windy here today. I'm sure you can hear it in the mic and the acorns falling from the trees. We need a nice layer bacon grease. To me, eggs are the ultimate test of your cast iron. Alright guys, so here we go with our eggs. Chickens are out there running around the yard. This is backwards, it's feeding them some strawberry tops right now. If you watch one of our camping videos, we showed you how to use the back of the shell like that to wrangle your yolks to the middle of the pan. And as soon as it gets enough heat in it, it will stay very close. Makes it easier to flip later. So those are looking pretty awesome. Going to go ahead and get a little seasoning, that Seminole Swamp seasoning. If you like to try Seminole Swamp seasoning, I'll leave you a link right down in the description box where you can buy that online. It's one of the best all-around seasonings I've ever used. And they don't pay me a dime to say that. Now, this is pretty non-stick already. Now, here's where some people in the cast iron community, just their heads explode every time they see me do this. Yes, that is a metal spatula. It's very thin. I'm using it at a very low angle to get under those eggs and just roll them. All right, you can use metal tools gently in your cast iron without any damage to the finish. All right, guys, let's go ahead and plate this up backwards gourmet style, bringing in some of those nice hot fried potatoes, or you might call them home fries, home hash browns, whatever you want to call them, they're delicious. Crispy bacon, right from that cast iron. Mm -mm -mm. Now, I get the plate over here. We'll get us some nice eggs. Right there with some Seminole Swamp. Hey, and just for good measure, there's a little bit of scrambled. We tried and that worked just fine. There you go, beautiful breakfast cooked in cast iron with the brand new Field Company Skillet. First impressions with the Field Company pan. We just used it to make that beautiful breakfast. I. Uh, just uh, 
wiped it inside down with the, and the outside both with a little Corona Duche cast iron oil. This won't go rancid on you. Uh, we scrubbed it out. It cleaned up really nice. It performed, I think, just as well as this old, you know, 75 year old wall pack. The finish on the inside is gorgeous. The casting on the outside is flawless. Um, uh, everywhere. It's just a very, very well made pan. Um, they're a little pricey. I know that you guys are going to say, hey, it's a little pricey for me. Unless you find a deal on one of these old guys right here, about the same price, but you can get this one tomorrow. These you're going to have to hunt down. I have an old large box right back, uh, Griswold back here. If I had, my mother-in-law gave that to me, but if I had to purchase that pan, I just looked at them at the same time. You see them in the video <clears throat> that we're going to put in right uh, in the video here at the antique store. Well over pushing 200 and a pan, that chicken fryer pan size, almost $300 for that old Griswold. So if you take that into comparison of how well this pan's made, it's not so bad. And this is gonna work awesome on your induction cooktop if you got one of those. So if you'd like to know more about the Field Company Pan, please check out the link in the description box to their website. And we also have a link there if you wanna purchase one through our site that helps us out a little bit. So if you like what we're doing, please hit that like button right down there to subscribe to our channel. You can do it right there to see another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's gonna be right there. And for a whole playlist of cast iron and Dutch oven cooking, it's gonna be right up there. We'll see you next time.